This week we're going to see how to get a more true green instead of the veggie band out of our goes images. Welcome to another Met Pie Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week we're going to pick up where we left off in last week's video, so if you haven't seen that one, be sure to go and watch that first. In that video, we were able to produce an image like this from Go16 data. Now this is not bad, but we use the red, blue, and veggie bands, which we said the veggie band is really more of a near IR band, and it makes the image look too green. Everything looks like a rainforest, which we know is not true in early February, in the continental United States. So how can we get a more true color image? Well, we have to create a synthesized true green channel. And there's been some research done on what will give us the best proxy for green. So I'm going to go up here, actually above where we're making our color image. And I'm going to create that proxy true green channel. So my data, true green is equal to 0 0.45 times data red that values plus 0 0.1 times data the veggie band dot values plus 0 0.45 times data blue dot values so we're creating a mix of 45% red, 45% blue, and 10% veggie to synthesize the true green channel. So if we do that, we change from veggie to true green, and then replot our image, we'll see how close we get. And we see a very dramatic difference. In fact, it's maybe a little bit late in the day, but we can see the more brown topography that we would expect for this time of year. But this image is very dark. And as it turns out, we have to consider something called the gamma correction or gamma compression. So this is a nonlinear encoding function. It's, it's power law, in fact. And it optimizes the bits that are used to store the image. So if you look at something like Stephen's power law on how humans perceive brightness, we have a much greater sensitivity to changes in levels of darker colors than between lighter colors. So if we just use a straight up one-to-one -one encoding, we'll allocate too many bits of our sensor bit depth or the bandwidth of the image or however you want to measure that to the highlights. And we're allocating a lot of bits to those and we can't really see the difference. Whereas the darker tones have the same number of bits, but we're more sensitive to those. So we can perform a gamma correction and get, again, a more true-to-life image, something that our eyes are going to work better with. So to do that, we're going to do it up here before we calculate our true green. We're going to apply a gamma correction to the red, veggie, and blue bands. Since I want to do it to each, I'm going to use a loop instead of copying and pasting the same code three times. So for key value in data.items, as always, anytime you can not copy and paste code, it's a good idea. The data for that key, we're going to use NumPy's power function. It's the value to the power of 1 on 2.2. So now we apply that gamma correction. We're going to calculate our new true green, build our new color image, and plot it. All right, and now we have an image that is, though maybe still a little bit later in the day, much more representative of what we expected to see. We've got brown topography, we've got adequate contrast between land and ocean, and we can even start picking out some interesting coastal features, as well, of course, as the weather. So big thanks to Brian Blaylock for the examples and help in getting these true color images and gamma corrections correct and making these images look good. 
As always, we appreciate you, our community. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's Met Pie Monday.